Good morning, everyone. Jennifer LeClaire here with you, senior leader of the Awakening House of Prayer Global Movement. God is good. Our church is here in Fort Lauderdale, our prayer room. House of Prayer is open every day from 11 to 6. It's open for you. You can go in and pray. Prophecy rooms, healing rooms. It's all here. We meet on Sundays. If you're not in South Florida, watch online at ahop.online. Today's broadcast is sponsored by the International Prophecy Rooms Alliance. If you weren't on the broadcast last night, wow, you missed it. It was pretty fun. I talked about all the benefits of having a prophecy rooms ministry in your church and how we can help you start one, get all the paperwork together, the protocols. God is good. You can find that at tinyurl.com slash prophecy rooms. Of course, you missed the broadcast, but we can send that to you if you'd like to see it. tinyurl.com slash prophecy rooms. I'm the founder of the Ignite Network and our devotional, one of the three that we read from, uh, that the Holy Spirit wrote is Victory Decrees, Daily Prophetic Strategies for Spiritual Warfare Victory. And today's devotion is titled, Are You Ready? Watch Your Mouth. Uh-oh. Watch Your Mouth. Here's what I heard the Lord say. It's so funny. Watch your mouth. Let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. For in doing so, you are opening a gate for the enemy to walk through to kill, steal, and destroy. I warned you about the power of death and life in your tongue. Heed my warning because your adversary, the devil, comes for your words. He comes for your agreement to wreak havoc on your life. He will use your words as a weapon for you, against you if you let him. So watch your mouth and speak only that which is edifying. Hallelujah. Prayer star, uh, scripture references for today, Ephesians 4, 29, Proverbs 18, 21, and 1 Peter 3 and 10. The prayer starter and the devotional. Father, set a guard over my mouth and let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth if I set out to speak anything against your will. Help me tame your tongue. Shaba shaka taraba shiki tirubo shaka ta ora ma shora ba shibi shaka taraba shaka. Here's the decree. I decree the power of life issues a death warrant against the enemy's plans. I declare the power of life emanates from my tongue and brings healing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God is good. Father, we thank you this morning and we repent right off the bat that we have chosen to make this holy time about anything other than prayer. Father, I ask you to help us to understand the importance of prayer and the importance of being on one accord as we pray. Lord, teach us to pray and teach us the dynamics of prayer because only you hear and answer prayer. We can pray in vain. We can labor in vain. But when we pray with you, we see results. So help us this morning, God, to focus completely on you not on what the kids are doing in the other room or the dog barking in the apartment next door or the thoughts of our minds and what we want and our personal agendas. But help us, Lord, this morning to laser beam focus on you and your will, your way in this time that we have together. Father, we thank you that you move in corporate prayer, that one can put a thousand to flight and two can put 10,000 to flight. So, Father, we thank you this morning that as we gather together in droves, as we gather together in unity, as we gather together on one accord, that you will hear and answer our prayer. We praise you, God, as the prayer answerer. We praise you, God, as the one who hears our decrees and puts wind behind it and causes it to go into the situations to bring change that we see, that we need to see in Jesus' name. Father, we praise you and we thank you this morning because you are a good, good father. Father, you do love us with everything in you, and we love you because you first loved us. So we praise your name this morning as the God who hears prayer. We praise your name this morning as the God who answers prayer. We praise your name this morning as the God who delights in the prayers of the righteous. We praise you, God, this morning for the God who inspires us to prayer. We praise you, God, this morning for the God who teaches us to pray. We praise you, God, this morning because you are the one who has the power to deliver the power 
to save the power to heal and yes the power to hear and answer prayer so now that we're all focused and on one accord God now that we are ready to pray God we ask you in the name of Jesus to break in with massive power and light and love God saturate our dwellings with your love and with your presence and with your joy in Jesus name God help us to see what we could not see before when we were distracted by the ways of the world distracted by the noises here and there distracted by everything the enemy puts in our path we will no longer allow ourselves to be distracted from your love but we will return even now to our first love we will press into your heart and realize who you really are and understand what your word really means God we need a revelation we've come before you today because we need something from you that's why we're petitioning you that's why we're making supplication that's why we're releasing intercession because we are needy needy people we need you and we need more of you than we even know we need so father shed your love abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost today would you help us Lord to receive that which you're pouring out in measure in abundance God would you help us Lord to receive that which you're saying not just to hear it not just to hear it not just to hear it but to receive it in our hearts so that our minds would be renewed and our lives would be transformed God we thank you this morning morning for your grace and your goodness and your mercy and we thank you Lord that goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and even when plagues threaten our dwelling they shall not enter our dwelling they shall not come nigh our dwelling they need maybe right down the hall right down the street or even right next door but they shall not come nigh our dwelling they shall not enter our dwelling because we are fortified in Christ we are hiding under the shadow shadow of your wings we will not be distracted by the news media that wants to tell us how bad this week will be but we will look at our God and see how good you are we thank you Lord we thank you Lord we thank you Lord that you are seated on the throne high above principalities powers and plagues high above principalities powers and plagues high above principalities powers and plagues and we are seated in you therefore we are far above principalities powers and plagues come on we are far above principalities powers and plagues we have authority we thank you Lord that our authority works by faith and faith works by love so help us Lord to love you a little stronger and to receive more and more and more of what you're freely pouring out in our midst oh God you give it freely you give it liberally your love your joy your peace you pour it out without measure you're there you're ready we just got to get up under the open heaven so father help us Lord to pray without ceasing to walk in such a way that there is an open heaven over our life to create a spiritual climate with our words a spiritual atmosphere with our praise that invites heaven to come to earth over our heads over our households over our workplaces Oh God we need your help because we don't know how to speak like we ought to speak our tongues are unruly our mouths are sometimes lighting fires in our life and we need your help because we want to create spiritual atmospheres and climates over our life that are open portals like Jacob's ladder where the angels were ascending and descending up and down up and down up and down or we want to receive that revelation that you're pouring out we don't want to be hindered by our own distraction hindered by our own frustration hindered by our own hatred hindered by our own whatever we need what you're pouring out God help us Lord to get right up under that heavenly spigot help us Lord to get right up under that heavenly spigot and drink deep come on I just saw a picture when you were a kid did you ever drink out of the water hose <laughs> when you were a kid did you ever drink out of the water hose I just saw a water hose and just 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 lapping that water up that's how we need to be that's how we have to thirst after God when I grew up we would play freeze tag and red robin and all these games and run and play and roll around in the grass and jump and hopscotch and do all those kind of things and then we would go drink out of the water hose this was obviously a very long time ago most people don't even use water hoses anymore you live in condos and apartments and we were we would we would run and play and dance and skip and jump to the point that we got thirsty 
and this has to be our attitude with the Lord that we're working the works of Christ and we're thirsty for him and when we get tired and worn out from the work of Christ the co-laboring with him when we've when we've when we've exhausted our physical natural bodies our spirits are still hungry and we go and we drink deep and it revitalizes even our mortal flesh the Bible says the Holy Spirit can quicken our mortal bodies I know some of you are tired I know some of you are weary half of the people that are usually on this broadcast are sleeping in because they don't have to go to work and they're staying up late nights probably watching the news or dealing with kids or cleaning their house or catching up on things who knows or maybe they're up all night praying I don't know it's all good but many people are just tired and worn out from the stress and that's why they're not up and that's what we want to address so father help us to come to you all of us who are weary and overburdened because you promised to give us rest you promised to give us refreshment out of that water hose that we would drink deep when we're thirsty when we're worn out help us Lord to recognize our own thirst before we get so hot before we get so spiritually dehydrated that we make ourselves sick come on help us recognize God our own spiritual thirst help us recognize our own spiritual thirst help us recognize our own spiritual thirst before we get so dehydrated <laughs> that we make ourselves sick Lord fill us again with your spirit oh God fill us again with your spirit to overflowing fill us again with your spirit to overflowing God we're thirsty we might not know we're thirsty but we're thirsty we might not know we're hungry but we're hungry some of you have lost your appetite in the natural don't lose your appetite in the spirit eat whether you're hungry or not read the Bible whether you feel like it or not <laughs> read the word whether you feel like it or not when people lose their appetite in the natural they stop eating because they don't feel like eating and they're missing an important nutrition read your Bible whether you feel like it or not read your Bible whether you feel like it or not Jesus 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 I want to pray through one more thing with you today I've been going on and on on these broadcasts today I've got something I've got to do I can't spend an extra 30 minutes with you this morning but I do want to pray with you through one more thing right now we're seeing a lot of really ugly stuff in the body of Christ a lot of ugly stuff we're seeing more strife than I've ever seen and the vitriol the level of wickedness coming out of the mouths of believers has grieved my spirit to the point that I just have to stay in prayer and some years ago some years ago I had a friend and he's still my friend but there was a lot of ugly stuff going on then it's not new and he said something to me that I've always remembered and the Holy Spirit reminded me of it yesterday and I want to share it with you he said when you're grieved at the behavior of the bride get your eyes off the bride and put your eyes on the bridegroom in other words the church can be grievous and when the church the people in the church are grieving your heart and just stirring your soul in a negative way stop looking at the church and start look at the start looking at the Savior stop looking at the bride and start looking at the bridegroom sometimes you just have to get your eyes off the bride and that's counterintuitive to some people doesn't make any sense but I can't for one I can't keep I, I can't I, I just I don't even want to go on Facebook anymore because of what's happening out there so disgusting so what I'm doing of course I have to use Facebook to communicate with all of you so I just completely unfollow block or unfriend those who are being vitriolic so that at least I don't have to see it a second time but the bigger principle here is go sit in the presence of the Lord and look at the bridegroom get your eyes off the bride and put them on the bridegroom David said in Psalm 27 verse 4 one thing have I asked of the Lord and that I will seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life and gaze upon the beauty of the Lord 
and inquire in his temple father put such a deep desire in our heart to gaze upon your beauty that we would not be tempted to look at the spots and wrinkles in the bride Lord give us such a hunger such a thirst for you that we would not be interested in scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and listening and listening and watching and watching these things that grieve your heart probably more than they grieve our heart help us Lord to keep our eyes on you to keep our eyes on the bridegroom Jesus Christ our beautiful Savior he's coming back soon there's gonna be a wedding feast Lord we want to be part of that we want to focus on that day we want to have an eternal perspective we want to have a heavenly view we don't want to be stuck down here at like citizens of the earth looking at all the things going wrong and wondering what's going to happen next we want to be as we are citizens of heaven heavenly minded looking at things to come understanding things that are unseen but that are promised in Scripture God help us Lord to be like David and to be a person of one thing one thing one thing have I asked of the Lord and that I will seek after God help us to seek after your beauty help us to seek after your love help us to seek after your presence help us to seek after your kingdom help us to seek after your righteousness for your word says if we seek first the kingdom and your righteousness that everything else we need will be added to us you're not gonna add grief you're not gonna add sorrow you're gonna add what we need and you're gonna take away those things we don't need because they won't be in our purview we won't have to be destroyed distracted by the nasties we won't have to be distracted by those who persecute we won't have to be distracted by the attackers we won't have to be distracted by the blindsiders we won't have to be distracted we'll just be focused on you God give us doves eyes eyes of devotion for you and you alone eyes of adoration for you and you alone Isaiah 33 17 says your eyes will behold the king in his beauty they will see a land that stretches afar God help us Lord let our eyes behold the King in his beauty help us Lord to keep our eyes on the King and his beauty teach us Lord teach us Lord teach us Holy Spirit help us to keep our eyes on the King and his beauty <laughs> we could look at so many other things we were tempted to look at so many other things but Lord help us to keep our eyes on you and your beauty you are our King you're not just our Savior you are our King you are the ruler you are the Lord of all you are the master of the universe help us to keep our eyes on you and you will keep us in perfect peace we won't have to be grieved about the Facebook haters and the accusers of the brethren because we're not gonna look at that we're gonna look at you our eyes will behold the King in his beauty we will see a land that stretches afar song of Solomon says you are altogether beautiful my love and there is no flaw in you Jesus you are beautiful 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 there's no shifting shadow of turning in you you're not a man that you should lie nor the son of man that you should repent you don't rebuke us when we ask for wisdom you are altogether beautiful you are altogether lovely you are altogether perfect you are altogether wonderful wonderful counselor you are altogether our everything help us Lord to keep our eyes on the bridegroom to keep our eyes on the beautiful Savior to keep our eyes on beauty personified you are the beautiful God the good and beautiful God that is who you are help us to keep our eyes on you our hearts aligned with you that we will not stray away from you because of an offense I have never seen so many people get offended over petty little stuff as I have in this season the Bible says that many will be offended and the love of many will wax cold offense is the first step love waxing cold is the next step and after that is deception from false prophets go read it in Matthew 24 help us Lord to keep our eyes on you that we not might not be offended by our brothers and sisters so many petty 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 offenses strife we don't want to be distracted by that God we want to be so sold out and consumed with your beauty that we don't even notice those things because we can't do anything about it unless you prompt us to pray unless you help us to pray in other words we can't even pray without you so help us to stay focused on you so that you can tell us what to pray when to pray how to pray Zechariah 9 17 for how great is his goodness 
and how great is his beauty he's a beautiful God help us Lord to get our eyes off the bride put our eyes on the bridegroom it's not easy it's not easy especially when the bride is up in your face with accusations it's not easy it's not easy especially when the bride's puffed up like a prideful blowfish giving you witchcraft glances all through the church service it's not easy it's not easy it's not easy but God we can do it you can help us to keep our eyes on you you can help us to keep our eyes on you we don't want to be offended we don't want to be the prideful ones releasing witchcraft looks at people we don't want to be that way how great is his goodness and how great his beauty how great is his goodness and how great is his beauty Isaiah 28 5 in that day the Lord of hosts will be a crown of glory and a diadem of beauty to the remnant of his people there's that word remnant there's that word remnant there's that word remnant in that day the Lord of hosts will be a crown of glory and a diadem of beauty father you are the beautiful one Jesus you are the beautiful one Holy Spirit you are the beautiful one help us Lord to get our eyes off everything that's wrong with the church we know it must grieve you <laughs> if it grieves us it must grieve you but somehow you find a way to keep loving because you are love so help us Lord to love the bride but to love the bridegroom first receive his love so that we have some love with which to love the bride we thank you Lord praise you we honor you we adore you there's no other God like you you're the beautiful beautiful God you're the beautiful Savior those who keep their eyes on you you'll keep us in perfect peace you'll keep us in perfect peace you'll keep us in perfect peace we love you we thank you for who you are the beautiful 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 God thank you Jesus thank you Lord in Jesus name amen it's not easy it's it's real easy to love God and gaze upon his beauty when you're in your prayer closet but sometimes you walk right out into the hallway of your condo and boom Christianity is easy to practice until you add people into the mix because <laughs> we're all flawed we are all less than perfect isn't God good to remember that he's good even when other people are acting bad he's good if you want to donate to this ministry we could surely use the help not just with boosting Facebook posts but all kinds of stuff jenniferleclair.org slash donate you want to sew you can also sew via cash app dollar sign Jennifer LeClaire cash app is dollar sign Jennifer LeClaire you can use the text to give seven five four seven zero one two one six one text the word pray seven five four seven zero one two one six one text the word pray you can use cash app cash app dollar sign Jennifer LeClaire capital J capital L capital C Venmo is at Jennifer LeClaire PO box 30563 Fort Lauderdale Florida 33303 we're boosting all these posts now just trying to get the word out to everybody that God is good amen you want to be part of the International Prophecy Rooms Alliance we're gonna have a, a replay of a video demonstrating sort of what we're dealing with and that'll be up soon at tinyurl.com slash prophecy rooms you'll be able to watch that there amen PayPal PayPal is paypal.me slash Jennifer LeClaire paypal.me slash Jennifer LeClaire that is there for you as well if you want to sew via PayPal this is a time of the remnant rising this is the time of the remnant rising the hour of the rising remnant make sure you get involved in that if that's gonna bless you I'll see you later